Sweet. All right, it is good to be back. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Hunter Nikolai, as Eric talked about, and I was the intern here at High Plains this past summer. It's great to see a lot of familiar faces, and if you don't know me, it is on. And now my voice is working like this. Okay, I've never done this before, guys, I promise. So Eric invited me to come preach this Sunday because as he calls it, it is International Youth Pastor Day, or as I like to call it, Eric's just too tired and Cody's not here, so he needed somebody. And I guess I, I guess I fill the, fit the bill. So it is New Year's Eve, and I'm sure him and Cody are ex focused on all the exciting things that they have planned for all you guys this upcoming year. But the year is not over yet. There is more to still talk about, especially in the next next uh, 25 to 50 minutes, give or take. <laughs> And I also don't have slides for today. I apologize for that. You might get lost, but it's okay. So if you would like to follow along, open up your Bibles to Joshua 24 right now. So it is New Year's Eve, and New Year's means new goals, new plans, new jobs, new houses, and new relationships. And it can be a little hard getting used to all these different changes, whether they are good changes or they are bad changes. Now, I don't think that we have to raise our hands and vote on whether we like change or not. It's a pretty common fear of most people that we don't like change. Change is scary, change is, it's different, but change is necessary. We all go through it, and that's a good thing about life, because through change is how we see growth. And God uses change in our lives on the outside to impact who we are on the inside. I mean, that's what being a follower of God is all about, isn't it? changing our, our attitudes, our beliefs, and our actions to align more with the Holy Father. And a lot of the time, our circumstances lead to some pretty big changes. But the thing is, God's people have always been going through some pretty big changes. And that's why we're going to start in Joshua 24 here, looking back at the Old Testament. And don't worry, we're not talking about Moses. That was all summer. You guys have had enough Moses at this time. But we're going to look at his successor, Joshua. And if you remember right, Joshua was one of the two faithful spies who looked over the promised land before the Israelites entered it. Now, at this point of the story, Joshua had been leading the Israelites through the promised land, killing kings and conquering nations so that the Israelites could possibly find peace in the promised land. After being enslaved in Egypt and wandering in the desert for 40 years, the nation of Israel was ecstatic to finally be in this place. But before everyone is ready to split up the land and settle in, Joshua, the leader, will speak to his people one last time. We start in verse 14 here. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the God your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, the God of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Now, throughout this whole time, the Israelites have been enamored with false idols, the, as was custom in every nation that was surrounding them. They would throw themselves down on the ground to worship these pagan images of gods. It almost felt like having the God of the universe on their side wasn't enough for the Israelites. I mean, that's how they got stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. I mean, we can recall the scene from Mount Sinai. The people gathered there at the base of the mountain, and Moses said to the people, hey, I'll be right back. Don't do anything stupid while I'm gone. And what did they say? Well, in Exodus 24, 3, the people responded with, everything the Lord has said, we will do. And that's exactly what happened, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> Okay, not really. Because if you know anything about the Israelites, you know that they tend to mess up a lot. 
while Moses is up at the summit of Sinai talking to God on their behalf, they have a stroke of genius and decide to make this giant golden calf. And they begin to worship it, building an altar in front of the calf and offering sacrifices to the gods who brought them out of Egypt. I think an interesting part of the story comes from uh, the materials that they used to build this idol. You may ask the question, where did they get all this gold from? Oh yeah, from, from Egypt, the place that they were enslaved for 400 years. And just like an ex-girlfriend who still has my gray Carhartt sweatshirt, the Israelites are holding on to a little baggage. <laughs> That's a good joke, okay, whatever. Their, their dependence on other gods and even other nations is evident in this moment when they raised up that calf and began to worship it. They were so close to the promised land but they disobeyed God yet again. This is not a new topic to the Israelites. The problem of idolatry has been running rampant for years and years and years. So it makes sense that Joshua would have to go over it again. Now back to the message of Joshua. The Israelites respond to him, with, respond to his plea this way. Uh, verse 16, the people answered, far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Does that sound familiar? They continue, it was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed these great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Wow, they did it guys. The Israelites finally figured it out. Well, let's look at what Joshua's response to them is. Verse 19, Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been so good to you. Whoa, 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 chill out, Joshua. We literally just said that we were gonna follow God, but, but Joshua knows better than that because Joshua knows it's a lot easier to say than to do. You know, I remember all the times growing up when I'd be sitting there and I would uh, be playing video games in my living room, right? There's a common scene, all right? You'd be sitting there on your Xbox and my mom would come in and she'd be like, hey, Hunter, can you go do the dishes? Very simple request, right? And I'd be yeah, mom, I got it. I can do the dishes. And then a few minutes pass by and my mom comes again. She says, Hunter, are you, are you gonna go do those dishes? I'm like, yeah, of course, mom. I, I, I heard you, I'm gonna do it. 10 more minutes pass by, my mom comes walking by, Hunter, dishes. Yeah, yeah, mom, I heard you, I know. And then suddenly my Xbox is turned off and my mom is staring at me, she said, Hunter, go do the dishes. And I would, I would get so upset at her, I would just, mom, why are you always on my back? Why are you so mad at me? Stop nagging me, I heard you the first time. And she would stop me and just say, why didn't you do as I said? And she's right. Why didn't I do as she said? The Israelites are doing the same exact thing. And no matter how many times the Israelites have received this lesson, they will not change. In verse 20 it says, if you forsake. But in the original Hebrew it sounds more like, for when you forsake. Joshua knows that the Israelites are gonna mess up. He knows that they're not gonna back up what they are claiming. These are hollow promises given by the Israelites. Now they continue to argue with Joshua, saying that they will follow God this time, which they did, this specific group of Israelites. But as we see in the book of Judges, just one book further, it gets worse and worse for the Israelites. And they serve false God after false God after false God. Like a kid who says he's gonna go do the dishes, but really has no intention of doing them. Why is, why is Joshua nagging us so much? Why, why aren't you following God's commands, is what he's saying. 
one commentator writes that Joshua is telling them that God's not going to put up with their broken relationships with God or their grievous sin that's just causing a divide that they just keep going back to. I don't think it's a coincidence that the first two commandments etched onto those stone tablets that the great Moses brought down from Sinai are about worshiping God and only God. They shouldn't even be having this conversation. Joshua tells them to throw away their gods. Why? Because they still have them. Despite getting this lesson time and time again, Joshua is concerned with the Israelites' ability to follow what they say they will do. But Hunter, you may be asking, why is it so bad to worship these idols on like the side if like God's still the main focus? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to a Mexican restaurant and you filled yourself up to the brim with chips to the point that you can't even eat the main course? <laughs> I'm not alone in this. <laughs> and God is the main course. He provides all that we need. But we put substitutes in there. Let's look at how Joshua starts off this whole declaration in verse 2. And this is going to be a big section, so lock in. Stay with me, please. Joshua says to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. And this is Yahweh himself speaking directly through Joshua to his people. And I want you guys to focus on the I and the you language used here. Start in verse 2. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians, but what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea, but they cried out to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians." Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them before you, and you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to, be, to Balaam. So he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites, but I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you, also the two Amorite kings. You did not do it with your own sword and bow, so I gave you land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant." God has done everything for the Israelites. Everything for his people. God says, I sent Moses and Aaron to Egypt. No, 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 you don't understand. I brought your people out of slavery. You're still getting mixed up. I gave your enemies into your hands. You, you Israelites, you did not do it with your own sword and bow. You did not toil for this land. You did not build these cities. You did not plant these vineyards. I, I did it. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River in Egypt and serve the Lord. I provide everything that you need. Everything. So why do you still follow these idols, these worthless pieces of silver and clay? Throw them away and follow me. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Choose today, right now, who you will serve. 
It's a great reminder to the Israelites who are ready to finally live in the promised land. And I think it's still a great reminder to us today, especially as we head into a new year. Joshua calls the people to do two things, to remember God and to refocus themselves. And I got a couple challenges for you guys today that I think might have some huge benefits as we go into this new year. It's a, it's a good marker, uh, the start of a new year, to look back at all the things that God has done for you. Like Joshua said to the people, he, he claimed all these different things that God was doing for them that they must have forgot. And my challenge to all of you today is before you go out celebrating tonight, sit down by yourself or with your family and list out some of the things that God has done for you this past year. What prayers did he answer? What family members did he help? What opportunities did he give you? I actually did this earlier this week. I have mine with me right here. I'll, read, I'll just read a couple. God kept my family and friends safe, even though there was a couple scares along the way. God blessed my mom with an amazing job in a new town that she was really concerned about. God helped me make it through another year of college. God allowed me to be a part of an amazing internship this past summer that really taught me how to do ministry well. God helped me meet a lot of you people here. There's just so many things that, the God has been that God has been faithful to me about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this up on my wall somewhere, maybe next to my mirror, and every morning I'm just going to look at it. And it's just going to be a good reminder of all the things that God has done for me this past year because I think we all know that it can be really easy to forget what God is doing when you're having a really rough patch or even on a normal day. But just even this reminder can help refocus us. Makes you think, yeah, God, God has done some pretty great things for me this year. Now, the second challenge I have has to do with refocusing yourself. And when I say that, I'm talking about making the conscious decision to follow God every day. Because I believe that truly worshiping God is a daily decision. Now, I don't know if all of you have made the decision to follow Christ, but as Christians, this is what we're called to do. He has to be our main focus. But how often do we wake up in the morning and tell God that we are worshiping him today? I think it's a good practice to have. Because how many times have we woken up and decided to worship something else? Worship ourselves. Oh, I need to, I need to go into work today and make some money. I, I need to go and study for this test all day. Oh, I, I can't wait to go out drinking with my friends tonight. How many times do we wake up to serve our own pride, our own greed, our own desires? And some of those things might not necessarily be bad, don't get me wrong, but anything becomes an idol if you put it before God. We may not have giant golden statues of cows. Well, at least I hope none of us do. <laughs> feel a little weird. But we all seek ourselves instead of God at times. I mean, this is what the passage out of Colossians 3 is talking about. It says, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So when you have to go to work, when you go exercise, when you go have dinner with friends, do that with God in mind. Refocus yourself every morning to go out and glorify God. If we aren't intentional about picking to worship God every day, we're probably going to fail. Serving a holy and jealous God cannot be done without divine assistance. It can't be done if we're just casual about it. There's too many things out in this world that are against us serving God. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. After creating your list, I'd like you guys to sit there and just pray for this upcoming year. Ask yourself the question, am I willing to fear the Lord? 
and serve him with all faithfulness? Am I going to remember all the things that he's done for me? Pray for opportunities. Pray for guidance this upcoming year. It can be a tough one. I understand that. And if you've been struggling with God recently, this is a great opportunity to get on the right foot. It's all about being intentional. God is already there, and he is ready for us to listen to him and work with him to build his kingdom. I started doing this practice I'm talking about this past year, where every morning I just wake up and I just pray, Spirit, be with me today. God, be with me today. And I do this purely as a reminder to myself. We already know that God is with us. He's already claimed that. But sometimes, just like the Israelites, we need the reminder. So, choose for yourselves this day, this new year, who you will serve. Am I, am I going to serve Hunter this year? Are you going to serve yourself this year? Or are we going to serve the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe, our provider and king, Yahweh? Make this a year dedicated to God and his kingdom. Because when we make ourselves available to God, that's when some pretty cool things can happen. Pray with me, please.